Chess.com and Lee Chess have been at war for years for the title of the best chess website. But today, boys, I decided to settle it once and for all. I decided to make Martin and Lee Chess Bot 1 play a chess game. And whichever side wins gets the title of the best chess website of all time. And boys, the game was absolutely insane so many tactics so many missed wins and the craziest ending you will ever see so let's just jump into the game so we have our boy martin with the black pieces because we need to give leeches some advantage martin is too strong of a player right <laughs> so we get e4 and we get e5 and we get this kind of weird opening where martin obviously develops a bishop he loves developing pieces in the opening but we get d4 which is sort of a weird gambit you can take take and now the queen holds the d4 square so the bishop has to move Martin decides to give a check because big brain Martin and now we get bishop to d2 no you could just take this bishop uh knight takes and just develop your knight well maybe not here but to e7 and you should be completely fine out of this opening but martin doesn't decide to do that he plays a5 very strange move to hold the bishop basically and keep this tension here but lee just but doesn't care he develops his knight to b3 following standard developing principles and i would say lee just is a lot better out of the opening controls a lot more of the center has more pieces developed martin is kind of just goofing around so we get bishop to e2 we get bishop to b7 and we get king to f1 from leech's bot what is with these bots and moving the king and not castling boys always castle okay and no martin decides he has had enough he decides to trade bishop for knight by taking the knight here on c3 and in this position you should definitely take with the bishop why well because the bishop is much more useful on this diagonal potentially you have some tactics let's say black is a bit stupid and develops a knight here well you can push the pawn attacking the knight and trapping the rook in the corner the bishop is just more useful there but leech's bot decides to take with the pawn not a losing move but you could play better okay get knight to e7 black obviously wanting to castle and now we get knight h3 knight on the rim pretty dim don't put your knights there black plays h6 we get the bishop moving forward maybe wanting to be a bit more active even though it doesn't do anything and now martin turns on big brain mode he decides to attack the bishop martin decided that he doesn't want white to have the bishop pair but white is like uh, you can take the bishop pair. He plays a4. Now, you could take this bishop. By some miracle, it's not hanging because there's a knight here. And Martin does decide to do that. Now, white no longer has the bishop pair. And black can just, you know, go with the queen and uh, go attacking stuff. Now, the engine doesn't really like this. But at a beginner level, this is a very practical move. You're attacking this twice. You're causing problems for your opponent. Now, it's not really a problem because you can play f3. And basically, you're never gonna lose that pawn in the center. And white doesn't find f3. Instead, white plays c4 blundering this pawn and martin just gobbles it up i like that from martin a lot and now there's even more practical problems look at this battery here okay and again the engine says that this position is equal but from a beginner point there's a lot of problems in this position first of all your knight is hanging if your knight moves this is hanging so mate is coming maybe also your rook is gonna hang then i like there's so much stuff that's hanging you can castle you can bring the rook attack down this file it is definitely equal but it's not comfortably equal okay the only move here is queen to d2 guarding the knight the knight guards this pawn and guarding this pawn here right but leech's bot does not find queen d2 he pushes a pawn and uh, yes the pawn push does intercept the bishop so it's no longer a battery but you lose a knight my homie uh that's not good but martin uh decides to castle <laughs> martin is king safety number one priority no i not take knight the knight is just still chilling here uh and white finally moves it now you're gonna see white kind of trying to create problems for martin okay martin develops the knight here not the best move as you can see the evil bar is already jumping up because there's rook to a3 just a very easy move to find very practical move to bring the rook over to the attack but white does not find that uh instead white plays queen to d2 now now queen d2 doesn't really serve a purpose right the battery is intercepted the knight is moved it's safe so queen d2 doesn't do much and now martin decides to jump in with the knight and this knight is gonna cause some problems for martin very soon as you will see boys so leech's butt goes rook to e1 very decent move i don't know if the engine likes it too much but you're defending this bishop you're setting up some discovered attacks it's a pretty decent move even though black is completely winning but black is only winning if he plays rook a to e8 trying to set up an attack here but black does not do that instead he moves the knight here which seems like a decent move you're attacking the queen right and you're gonna get something here but no because there's queen to c3 this move is brilliant look at this you're attacking the knight you're threatening checkmate and uh martin kind of gets lost here and he goes back with the queen to defend checkmate 
Now this is not good. The engine here recommends you just take the knight, but I found this move bishop to d3 that I really like because it causes problems for Martin. And I think as a beginner player, you should just cause as many problems to your opponent, right? Now the queen has to move. In the worst case scenario, it will be queen to h8 and you will just still take the knight. But maybe your opponent gets confused and pushes g6 thinking, oh, I attack your knight and now my queen guards the checkmate square. But in fact, they just blunder a fork. So you're just causing practical problems. Now in the game, we don't get any of those moves because Alicia's bot just decides to bring the knight back. And now black can be completely fine if black just brings the knight back. But Martin decides to go in with the queen thinking, oh, danger levels. If you attack my knight, I will attack your knight. But Martin, that's not how danger levels work. Because if your danger levels can get the danger leveled like this, it's not really a danger level. But yeah, now white is threatening checkmate again and threatening the knight. The queen was supposed to stay where it was. And uh, the queen goes back uh, trying to attack this knight, but uh, it's defended by the bishop there. You simply take the knight and white is completely fine and completely winning. But white decides to move the queen. White was thinking that the knight was hanging, maybe even wanting to go for an attack and just, I mean, just not doing this. And now Martin is completely winning again because knight to d2 check. You're gonna destroy this white king here, but uh, it's Martin we're talking about. Uh, the knight just goes back. Now you decide to bring the knight back, Martin. Now. Okay, it's not losing. Martin is still winning. Let's not panic. And it, uh, okay, it's still, it's still a game. The knight jumps in, attacking the queen. So, of course, you have to move the queen. Martin does find it. A very practical move, attacking the knight. So, the knight has to move again. But in this position where the knight is hanging, Leech's bot decides to play bishop to d1. And now, look at this. You can just take the knight, which is the top stockfish move. But you know what the second stockfish move is? Rook f to e8. Martin finds the second best stockfish move. Doesn't take the knight. I think this is by accident. But, hey, we're letting Martin take this one, okay? And now the rooks are gonna stare at each other. The queen goes to defend the knight. The rooks are just staring at each other. Martin pushes a pawn. The knight jumps in, but there's no attack here, okay? But the queen is trying to line something up. The bishop moves. Still no attack for both sides. Only black can win here. And look at this move. Martin pushes a pawn. It looks like this pawn is hanging. You can take it with the queen. You can take it with the bishop. And that's what happens in the game. Queen takes pawn. But Martin was sacrificing that pawn because he found queen to c4 check, okay? If you block with the bishop, I take your rook. And then I take this bishop with check. And if you block with the queen, well, I can just take the rook and then just take your queen with check. Trade everything off. And black would be completely winning. But do you think Martin found this pawn sacrifice to get queen to c4 check and all of this tactics? Uh, well, no, he played queen to d4 and he actually blundered a draw in this position. Yes, you can give this check because the bishop holds the queen. If the king goes to f7, look at this. You have a bishop check, king moves, and you have checkmate in two. But if the king goes to f8, now you just have a draw, repetition of moves. And Leech's bot could have saved this losing position for themselves. But uh, do you think Leech's bot realistically finds a forced draw? Of course not h3 blundering queen takes c4 check again and martin with a tactic in his hands a win at his palms uh sacrifices the bishop yeah he just takes a pawn sacrificing the bishop and this is the worst kind of sacrifice because you can take with the queen and force the queens of the board and now you would just be a clean piece up but as we know leech's bot is not much brighter than martin so it plays g3 and now this rook is hanging, but that is not even the best move, boys. Okay, you have to play rook takes e1 here. And now you have maiden 6. Now, can Martin find maiden 6? No. Can I find maiden 6? Well, if you give me enough time. But after this pawn push, Martin gets greedy and takes the rook and blunders the draw again. It's the same draw that I just showed you with the queen. But of course, Leech's bot doesn't find it. It said he plays king to g1. No, the bishop retreats. No, the bishop is hanging. But if you take the bishop, I take the rook on e1 with check. And you're getting destroyed here. So, kind of a crazy move by Martin to target the knight and uh, let this bishop hang. But Leech's bot doesn't take the bishop. And it said it plays bishop to b1. And now after this pawn push, Leech's bot takes it. But now again, rook takes e1. But again, rook takes e1 just ends the game on the spot for Martin. But Martin doesn't find it. He pushes b4. But now white is getting some advantage back. We get rook to c1. And this is just a horrible blunder because rook to f8... Look at this move. You're attacking the queen, defended by the other rook. And if the queen moves, I mean the queen and the rook double up on the f2 square. Does Martin find this? No, he pushes b3. Martin really wants another queen. So Leech's bot attacks his current queen. Martin, of course, moves it, setting up a battery. Martin just wants to go for the win. What a gangster. Queen h1, the most useless move I've seen ever in chess. And Martin keeps his cool and just jumps in with the knight. Now, you could take the knight here, okay, and trade some pieces off. 
But this is terrible for white because you would trade everything and you would just be down on exchange. And Martin's idea here is, well, if you don't take my knight, I might even sacrifice it. I might just start some crazy attack here. But white's queen moves from h1 and Martin gets a bit greedy attacking the knight. And why is this a blunder? Well, it's a blunder because you can actually take this here knight. And you might say, wait, what does that do? I, I just take their knight. Yes, but you will lose the rook in the corner. Right, if rook takes, we, we take with check. And you would just be a whole rook down here. Martin in this position blundered the game away. But Lee just about doesn't find it. Instead, he takes the b3 pawn. Being a little bit afraid of Martin getting a new queen. And look at what Martin plays in this position. Knight takes f2, sacrificing the knight. And if you take this knight, well, God help you. Because rook to b8, attacking the queen, starting some attack here. Okay, the queen cannot stay on the second rank because it would get pinned to the king. The rook and the queen coordinate on the b2 square there is this check and it's game over if martin found the sacrifice for this reason but white keeps some sense in him and doesn't take the knight instead white moves the queen up doing basically nothing martin moves the queen up and now the queen is attacked by the knight and martin with his queen hanging goes danger levels now danger levels doesn't really work here because i guess you could just take the queen if they take your queen you can take this pawn now the knight is hanging so after a position like this uh, this would be a draw, basically. I, I don't see any way that, uh, I mean, black could win here. This pawn is hanging. Yes, you are up in exchange, but you're not checkmating white, and especially with a rook and a bishop on the board. And white could always make a pass pawn here when these pawns, these pawns are doubled. So this would basically be a draw. But with danger levels in mind, Lee just bought the sights to take the knight. And this is completely losing because of queen to e3 check, okay? guarded by the rook the king has to move and now you can just take the queen for free so martin would be completely winning here except he doesn't find this tactic instead he brings his queen back but now this gives all of the advantage to white because white can just simply take this pawn and be a pawn up in this end game with two pieces for a rook which are much more useful but in this position leech's bot decides to be a beta and retreats the queen doesn't want to go for the attack doesn't want to go for the win and martin has had enough of this he pushes a pawn attacking the knight Instead of moving the knight, Leech's bot moves the king back, okay, blundering the game away. But Martin gives this check. After queen takes e3, rook takes e3, you can just simply move this knight away, right? But Leech's bot moves the king up, blundering a queen on b3. Oh my god, is Martin gonna see this? No, he plays rook to b8. Now, rook to b8 was a good move a few variations ago when the queen was on e5. But the queen is no longer on e5, so now the queen can just move to c2. And you can no longer pin the queen to the king because... The queen is not protecting the rook. They're not coordinated anymore. But guess what? When you cannot play rook to b2, Martin finds a way. He plays rook to b2, blundering a rook. Now, white gets scared because he's like, oh no, my knight is hanging and moves the knight. And Martin here finds a very practical move. Now, you should just take the queen. Just take the queen, goddammit. Martin instead goes queen to e4 and guards the rook here. So he's gonna win the queen anyway. The queen is pinned to the king here. So we get rook to f1 and Martin just takes the queen. And now Martin is completely winning. You can even give this check to win the bishop, win the rook, win the whole game. Uh, Martin decides to bring the rook down. Not the best move, but not losing. We get rook to g1. The queen goes in, and let's see how Martin is gonna convert this game. Or, is he gonna convert this game? Maybe Martin blunders a queen back. I don't know, boys. Let's see. So, we get the track. The king moves. And we don't take the bishop. We push another pawn. Okay, now we take. And now, if white plays this perfectly, it's mate in eight moves. But... White decides to play this, blundering maiden one, just a crisscross applesauce ladder checkmate. Very easy, but we don't get that. Instead, black takes the pawn, and uh, black is just gonna start pushing the pawn. I thought we were gonna get a repetition of moves, but thankfully, white moves up with the king, avoiding a repetition. Martin gives a check on a2. Now, it's basically force mate. The rook blocks, and if you take this rook, it's maiden one, because uh, the pawn holds this square, the queen holds this diagonal, and this whole line. So it would just be mate. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Martin doesn't take the free rook with mate. Instead, he plays rook to g1. Just blundering his own rook. Now, thankfully, after king takes, you can take here. And that is kind of what we get in the game. Uh, white takes the rook. And uh, Martin, instead of taking the other free rook, decides to take the pawn. Now, Martin is still completely winning. He has three pawns here that can promote to a new queen. This knight is kind of stuck. And you can just fork the rook and the king by some geometry, right? And uh, rook b1, I mean, Martin just tries to dance around, starts attacking the rook, starts pushing the pawn slowly. 
White is trying to win some pawns, but he's not successful. The queen is just way too overpowered at uh, defending everything. We get checked. We start pushing here. Martin brings the king. And uh, as we can see, after a lot of checks and a lot of pushing, Martin does lose some pawns, but eventually he gets two queens on the board. And after this move, it's just simply mate in one. Queen to g1 is mate. Martin gives this check. Okay, it's still mate. The rook will block, and then you will take the rook, and it's mate, right? Well, the rook blocks. Martin doesn't take the rook. <laughs> For some reason, Martin doesn't take the rook. Uh, the rook moves, and finally, after this whole long game, Martin starts pushing the other pawn and finds a nice checkmate defeating leeches bot and taking the title for chess.com of the best chess website that there is boys if you want to watch an insane bot game watch the time i played nelson but for every move i made i had to donate money uh, it was insane we lost a lot on that video so watch that and i'll see you boys in the next one bye